what'd you do that for? It was the best scene. The best scene? I couldn't even tell the scene was changed. It looked the exact same as in the beginning. Were you paying attention? Excuse me, I just watched the whole movie. The movie isn't over. Whatever, the majority of the movie, and I didn't get a word of what they were talking about. Dude, Shakespeare is boring. Why, hello, m'lady. Ah, it's talking! Shakespeare? The one and only. Aren't you a fine fellow? Sydney, it's the bard. He's come back to us. Uh... You are in the presence of William Shakespeare. Don't you have anything better to say? Yeah. Why is your work so boring? <laughs> Excuse me? I did not just dig my way out of 398 years worth of dirt to be told that my plays are boring by a proud, beggarly, three stooged worst stocking. This is what I'm talking about, Brent. What the hell is he saying? Wait, you don't know what he's saying? Why didn't you just say that? Well, duh. What did you think that I meant? True. Alrighty, well, give me somewhere to start and we'll break it down for you. Can we start at the beginning? Ha, <laughs> sure. Okay, so do you know who's who? Yeah, ish. I know that guy is the king. I'm pretty sure he's a bad guy. But I didn't catch any names except Cordelia. I don't know which one she is. Alright, so pretty good start. Yeah, he's the king. King Lear, which is also the name of the play. Yeah, I got that much, Brent. He has three daughters. Goneril, Regan, and Cordelia. Goneril is married to Albany. And Reagan is married to Cornwall. Okay, who was the old guy at the beginning? That was Gloucester, a nobleman in King Lear's kingdom. His son is one of the bad guys, Edmund. The thing about Edmund is that he's illegitimate, so he doesn't inherit any land or money from his father. Ouch, that's gotta suck. Wait, so who inherits? Edgar, m'lady, his eldest and legitimate son. We haven't seen him yet, but Gloucester talks about him at the beginning of the show. Okay... You got all that? I think so. Alright, so basically what's going on here is King Lear wants to divide his kingdom between his three daughters and basically house hop between them. After he divides the land, he will give Cordelia to one of her suitors, either the King of France or the Duke of Burgundy. Before he divides the land, the arrogant pig makes his daughters flatter him by telling him how much they love him. Gonriel and Regan go first, basically pulling every cliche they can think of out of their- But when it comes time for Cordelia to tell him how much she loves him, she can't flatter him. She says that she loves him like a daughter to her father, but some of her love must go to her husband. Lear misinterprets his goodness and disowns her. What? What a jerk. Kent tries to defend her. Oh, we forgot about Kent. This guy is very loyal to King Lear and was very close to the king. But when he tries to defend Cordelia, the king banishes him. This guy is crazy! Yeah. Well, he has the suitors come out and see if they want Cordelia now that she has no cash or land. Oh, I know this bit. Burgundy's all like, no way, but Francis is all romantic and stuff and says he'll take her because she's so pure. Well done. After everyone leaves, Gonriel and Regan are left on stage. They reveal their true scaly nature. They think Lear is an idiot and have no desire to care for him. So, that is the king's problem. Now we get to Edmund. He's annoyed because he doesn't inherit anything from his father, just because he's an illegitimate son. He is just as smart and capable as his older brother Edgar, yet he doesn't get squat. So, he tricks Gloucester into thinking that Edgar wants to get rid of Gloucester, using a letter that he, Edmund, forged. Gloucester is of course enraged, and demands Edgar be brought to him, while Edmund acts astonished. Then, Edmund tries to find Edgar and warn him that Dad is angry and that he should stay away from Gloucester for a while. He also tells him to carry a weapon. And Edgar has no idea what the hell is going on. Not a clue. Edmund gets Gloucester and Edgar to trust him, even though he's trying to destroy them both. Jeez, what happened to Kent? We'll get there. So now we're in Gonriel's house, with word that Lear is coming to stay. Gonriel's angry because Lear hit one of her men, Oswald. She says that she doesn't want to see Lear, and to disrespect him, has Oswald tell Lear that she's too tired to receive him. Meanwhile, 
Lear and his hundred knights are making their way to Goneril's house. Kent, disguised as a poor man, convinces Lear to hire him as a servant. They all reach Goneril's house, but there is no one there to greet them. This is a slap in the face to Lear, who still thinks of himself as a powerful king and father. Lear summons his fool, who promptly makes jokes about the whole situation. What do you mean, Lear's fool? He is there for the king's entertainment, but also criticizes the king's actions. Gonriel finally does come out of her house, but she tells Lear that his men are disruptive and crude, and she wants to fire 50 of them. Lear is totally insulted and leaves, but not before raining down insults and curses on Gonriel. Disgusted by her father, Gonriel sends Oswald to warn Regan that Lear is coming to stay with her. Lear also sends Kent to Regan with a version of what has happened. Regan and her husband, Cornwall, go to Gloucester to ask him what to do. They take Kent and Oswald with them. Meanwhile, Edmund tells Edgar to run away from the castle. He has convinced Edgar that not only is Gloucester mad at him, but also Cornwall, who will soon arrive. Edgar flees, and Edmund lies to his father, saying that Edgar was going to kill Gloucester. Thankful to Edmund, Gloucester says that he will give him all his lands. Regan and Cornwall finally arrive. Kent sees Oswald and remembers that he insulted Lear. Oswald doesn't remember Kent and is surprised when Kent attacks him. The fight leads to Kent being locked in the stocks. Let me guess, this would be a huge insult to Lear. Yep, but Kent is fine with being locked up because he's able to read a letter he got from Cordelia about her plans to save the king. When Lear gets to Regan's house, no one is there, so they go to Gloucester's castle. Here he finds Kent locked in the stocks and he is outraged. When Gloucester brings Regan and Cornwall out, Kent is released. We think everything is going to be fine, but as Lear starts to talk about how Gonriel insulted him, Regan stops him. She defends her sister and demands Lear go back and apologize. Speak of the devil, look who just showed up. Gone real. This whole time, Lear thinks that Regan is going to house his 100 knights, but Regan says she is only taking 25. When Lear tries to go back with Gonriel, who said he could have 50, she says he doesn't need any. 